Okay, and finally today we have Scotty, uh, WA2DFI, who is going to talk to us about the Tangerine SDR. And this is a sign, so Scotty is um, primarily from Tapper, and uh, this is the scientific software defined radio that will be a part of the personal space weather station. Take it away, Scotty. Thank you, Nathaniel. All right. So before we get really started, everybody hear me okay? Before we get started, I have a couple questions. Now, first of all, how many people were at the SDR forum yesterday? Okay, that's it, I'm reading. <laughs> Just remember what it was like and you're all set. This is a variant of that one, so you'll see a lot of the same stuff, especially at the beginning. First off, I want to try the same experiment. Everybody knows what a Raspberry Pi computer is, right? How many do you? Ha how many have five of them? Okay, okay, let's get serious. How many have twenty of them? Twenty. Okay, how many? Tw how about twenty-five? So twenty? No. How about how many of them are still in the box? Because they don't count. <laughs> so do you still have twenty? Running, up and running, powered. All right. Not bad. This is a serious group. Okay, so this is a little bit different order. So how many people know about HamSci? Okay, now, better be everybody, right? How about OpenHPSDR? Any people in here? So about a half, maybe? How about Open Research Institute? So a few. And how about Tapper? Okay, pretty much everybody. Okay, good, you all pass. <laughs> So, a little bit of Tapper's mission, which I'm not going to dwell on too long because most people already know this if you already know about Tapper. But Tapper's like a facilitator. We, we support R&D funding. If you uh, have a great idea that's going to change the world and take over ham radio, and so you can run the whole place from your shack, we want to hear about it because we'll help you build one. And we figure if you're going to put your brain power and your sweat equity and your midnight uh, sleepless nights building it, we can maybe help you with buying parts for you or building a prototype for you or something like that. And perhaps early volume production. And those of you who were in HPSDR, you already know how, what we did there. Is we weren't really HPSDR. We were the facilitators of the 500 people who got HPSDR kits. Because when you take a $150 board and you multiply it times 500, you can do the math pretty quick. You, how many want to put that on their Visa card? Come see me afterwards if you want to do that. Anyway, so that's what Tapper helps with, is getting early volume production, so getting boards out there in quantity for people to experiment with. And their mission is basically to facilitate. We have a lot of volunteers in, ta in Tapper and associated with Tapper, so if you're interested in helping with this project, please come see us afterwards, either at the Tapper booth in Building 5 or at the Hamside booth in Building 4. But Hamsai is basically a group of scientists Open HPSDR is a group of interested experimenters. ORI is a group of people promoting open source software and hardware. And Tapper is a, a facilitator promoting R&D in the area of digital radio. So they're, de they're separate, but they complement each other. So as we say, they're the same, only different. It's a joke. Anyway, so got to have a catchy name, okay? I mean, you got your Raspberry Pi, you got orange pie, you got banana pie, you got, you got even a grape one down here. And then of course lime SDR. So I started out trying to call this orange sickle, but then I decided that I didn't really want the Popsicle Corporation suing me for trademark infringement. So I thought, well, they can't trademark a fruit name, so we'll be a fruit name. So tangerine SDR, and of course we all know that orange is the new black, and we can get orange solder masks. So there you go. So red pataya, look out. <laughs> They're going to be tangerine. Okay, so what is the project? And it's, it's a modular open source. It's going to be open source for one thing, but it's modular. So the idea is we can target specific audiences of, of users. Well, there you are, a specific audience of users. If you want to do a space weather station, there's specific criteria for requirements that we have to meet. So we want to be able to meet those and those of experimenters and those of maybe uh, satellite users and various other. I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. 
But it's also a group of volunteers led by Tapper, and Tapper isn't just the eight, nine board members. It's anybody who wants to play. So, like I said, come see us. If you want to help, you've got ideas, you have skills that we can utilize. But if you're an FPGA programmer, if you're a software programmer, if you do board layout, we want to talk to you. So anyway, it's kind of like Open HPSDR, and kind of like ORI, and kind of like HAMSI, but different. Same, only different. So the, the, what are we going to have in a Tangerine SDR? Well, depending on what kind of performance you want, we'll be able to plug different modules together that will give you low performance, low dollars, or high performance, high dollars. And if you can figure out a way to get me high performance at low dollars, again, come see me afterwards. We've got to talk. I haven't figured it out yet, but... So open source model for both hardware and software and advances the state, rate of state of the art, so we want to make it modern technology. So $500 is the goal. Now, this isn't for the whole station. This is for the boards. So you're still going to have to have a feed line, an antenna, and, and things like that. But most hams already have that stuff. And I mean, So let me ask you this. How many hams don't have a computer in the shack? OK, there you go. None. Everyone has one, right? So, the, the, and help us spread the word, too, because the more people we get, and I'll tell you about this in a second, the more people we get, the more we make, the cheaper they are per unit, because we get volume, the, 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 the scale, what, what's, it, what's the term I'm using? It's the, the economy of scale, right? So, if you have to build five of them, forget it. So, I'd actually, I say this all the time, if you, you look on your desktop and you see a high-speed computer, Go find your nearest gamer and thank him. Because that's the reason you have a computer that costs under a thousand bucks that does all this, because they want to play games and they want it fast, and then we mooch off of that and do cool things. Okay, so again, the target applications. Space Weather Station is the primary one. I think that's what got us started on this project. And they were saying, well, if we make it modular enough, we can use it for a satellite ground station, uh, academic uses to teach FPGA and SDR techniques. Uh, like HPSDR, an amateur communications radio, or experimenters, or remote ham radio up at your cabin in the woods. I mean, there's probably uses that we haven't even thought of yet. So, specifically to personal space weather station, what do we need? Okay, what, what are the requirements that we have to meet? So, the basic requirements, and, and again, this is evolving, but this is the basic list that we've come up with so far. The two-channel direct down conversion, that means we take the antenna, and hook it to the analog to digital converter. Or in this case, we take two antennas and hook it to two ADCs, and we get two data streams, digitized data streams. And they're coherent, so they're off the same clock. So the, they're acquired at the, the data is acquired at the same instant. And we have to have some kind of filtering, because somebody here, I'm sure, lives next to some giant 50,000-watt broadcast station that they'd not like to keep out of their SDR. So we'd like to be able to allow you to put like a notch filter or a high-pass filter or something on it to get keep that out of your radio. Also, a step attenuator in the extreme case where you can just insert attenuation between the antennas and the A to Ds to keep them from overloading. And another thing is we're going to have lots of these, like an array of them, network of them worldwide, kind of like the uh, VLF receivers that you that, uh, we just talked about. So we have to calibrate. The hardware. Now, this doesn't calibrate the antenna or the feed line or anything, but injects a known level noise source into the front end of the radio and calibrates all the analog circuitry. And we can do this automatically under software control. Gigabit Ethernet is the easiest interface, standard, cheap, easy to interface to anything else. Almost everyone's PC in this room has a Gigabit Ethernet port. And a GPS disciplined oscillator for time stamping. So if You've got a, a radio in Maine and a radio in Southern California, and they want to look at the sky and grab the data. You've got to know that what time, what relative time did these two stations grab their data. So when you digitize the data, you mark the time that that data was acquired. Well, try to, this, this is the boggles the mind. Even 10 years ago, you couldn't do this. How about two stations, one in Africa and one in North America, that have their clock set to within 100 nanoseconds of each other? Pretty cool how you could do that with GPS DO. And then up to 892 kilohertz wide virtual receivers. So the, the one that was just talked about was one virtual receiver that was 48 kilohertz wide. We're planning for eight, like, I, 
Flex call them slice receivers. So they can be tuned anywhere in the 30 megahertz spectrum, 60 megahertz spectrum, 0 to 60 megahertz. And they receive, since we digitize the entire spectrum at once, they're all synchronous and they all, they can be tuned anywhere within that 60 megahertz in software. Also, three axis magnetometer, and that's a very low sample rate, so this measures the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, likely it will have to be remote because the wiring in your house probably is not going to be too friendly to this. So the theory is we're probably going to have a 100-foot cable and mount it on your backyard or your side yard or something like that. We, we haven't really figured this out yet. And typical magnetometers are very expensive. So actually, uh, Nathaniel's associate, I think uh, he's working on a low-cost version that we may be able to use. And we want to store the data for 24 hours so that the main repository can come back and query that circular data buffer and get anything that happened in the last 24 hours. So we basically remember everything that happened in the last 24 hours and make it available for, for access. So, so actually, so what can happen is everybody can be recording and then an event occurs and you can go back and say, oh, wait, we missed it. Let's go back an hour and get all the data from all these, these stations and give it all to us. So then it's like a Wayback Machine. And then the idea is you want to be able to, to trigger these machines, set up triggers, so you can say if there's a CME, coronal mass ejection, and it's arriving, it's going to hit the Earth at a particular time, which we can predict reasonably accurately, we can say, okay, now, at 0300 Zulu, we want everybody to record this frequency segment all around the world. So you set them all up to record at that time. So they've got to be not only queryable for the data, but they've got to be commandable over the Internet. And the metadata is what I was talking about is like time stamping is one piece of metadata that's going to be required. Other things might be like the geographic location that the sample occurred, where it occurred, uh, maybe what kind of receiver you're using. So this is a the typical example of this. I think this is, is designed, this block diagram meets all the criteria. So you've got the two antennas here, two filters. This is the calibrated source that can be switched in to the two front ends, bandpass filters here, ADCs, into an FPGA. Everybody knows what an FPGA is, right? Programmable logic. And then we'll, this is where the 892 kilohertz slices come from. You send it out to a three port gigabit switch. And this is kind of the unique thing. And I'm going to get to this in a minute. But it's, uh, it makes this board a little bit unique in, its, in making a system. And then off to the side, we've got your clock and your GPS that disciplines the clock. So this is kind of where the data, what data is, occurs where. So the data comes in here, transferred over here. Here's your eight streams of 192 kilo samples. Then the metadata gets added here, and then the data flows back out here to the remote polling and this is, I, this is command and control, but it also can be a streaming interface. So it gets sent off to a master repository of data, a central server, as we call it. So this is kind of a, um, this is where our modularity comes into play. These boxes here represent the modules. So we split the, the, the radio itself into an RF portion here inside this box. So everything up to the digitizers. Then we have a data engine, which is responsible for processing that data and sending it onward to wherever it needs to go. It clocked by a clock module. And then what we do is we include the single board computer in the design of the station. So what the thing is a little unique about this is the Tangerine SDR is not just a board. It's a system. So it's a board and a single board computer married together and draw the dotted line around both of them. So the system becomes the single board computer and the data engine together. And the data engine has its plug-in modules here. So it's a little bit different thing to think about. And this, now you maybe see why we have a three port switch here. So what happens is one of the ports goes to the FPGA, one of the ports goes to the single board computer, and then this is available to go off to your local network. So you could do this with a single port and a switch, but this port, this part here costs marginally more than a one port part. So why not just put it on the board and then you don't have to have a, an external switch. 
So let's talk a little bit. I already talked a little bit about the architecture. So this is what I was talking about when I said draw the dotted line around both boards. So that single board computer becomes part of the Tangerine SDR. And you say, well, why don't you just put all that stuff on here? Well, the fact is that for 35 bucks, I can't possibly build something that's going to have the performance that that Pi has or that Odroid has. And conversely, this single board computer doesn't have the mathematical computing power of my FPGA. So I'm taking the things that we do best and putting them on our board, and the things that I can buy cheaply, we're just going to buy. And so we won't have to, we won't have to reinvent, pardon me, reinvent the wheel. So this may look really scary, but the idea here is, here's the single board computer over here. Here's your gigabit Ethernet ports, one for the single board computer, one to the outside world. And what I meant to show with the slide was here, these shields, we, what we could do is we can put connectors on the board so that you could use Arduino shields, Raspberry Pi hats, Beagle Bone, what do they call a Beagle Bone thing? It's a, it's a, a cape, right. So this is all low speed I.O. and so it's not very critical. The high speed stuff, which is this gigabit Ethernet, USB 3, and the receiver and transmit, these are 500 megabytes per second interfaces back to the data engine. So these are critical here. And of course, this path out to a computer or this path out to a computer, these are critical here. And then the clock is a module that plugs on. And the clock module, you will actually buy the module that gives you the performance that you need. So for Pace Weather Station, you're going to need time stamping info. So you're going to have to have a GPS. You want a very accurate oscillator. You want a very low phase noise oscillator. But if you're just playing around making a VLF receiver, you don't need any of that. So we'll make a low-cost clock module that goes in here in place of the expensive one, because the GPS DO is like a $200 option. That's and you remember our budget of 500. That's kind of a budget buster when you look at that. So this would be an example of the Space Weather Station. Remember, there's two RF connectors. We would use one. We build a, du a dual-channel board that would hook to two antennas. This does a synchronous capture of both antennas simultaneously. Here's the magnetometer interface, and it can either connect to the client computer or, uh, or us, the DE, via I2C Spire. You are very low speed interfaces. This pulled once a, a second. It doesn't, it's not very fast. And then the GPS DO for a high precision oscillator and our two gigabit Ethernet ports. So the idea is now here is the master server I was talking to you about off site somewhere out on the internet. And we would collect the data from the antennas, timestamp it, process it, send it out over here. And the client computer kind of runs everything. It doesn't get in the way of the data. It's not in the data path, but it controls the data. It, it commands this board. And the advantage of this is this, this it commands this board. This has is running Linux, and it runs a TCP IP stack. So I get that for free. That's not easy to implement in an FPGA up in here. So I want to buy this for my $35, and I don't have to implement it in the FPGA. So, and how much time do I have left? One minute? OK. Well, so I was going to delve into a little bit more details of well, what the, the board was like, but I really don't have time to do that. I've kind of given you an overview of what we're going to build. And uh, again, we start here. And the features are a, the biggest Max 10 FPGA that we can come up with. Uh, 512 megabyte, megabyte of RAM. This is for an embedded soft core processor in the FPGA. So we will actually have a CPU running on the DE, but it won't match the processing power of even a Raspberry Pi. So let's see if I can go, if there's anything else that's critical. Let's just skip over. I've talked about, about most of this anyway, so don't panic. But Tangerine SDR is where we're going to have all the repository of information. All that's up there is a fruit now. But the data's coming, believe me. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Scotty. That's fantastic and fantastic work. I'm afraid we don't have any time for questions because the next forum is going to be starting. Uh, but we will be around. Feel free to talk to us afterward. Uh, again, put your uh, phone number or email address on that form as you pass it out. And then we will pick a winner for the mug. So, thank you and come visit us at the ham site.